Welcome to Outside the Veil. I'm Dave Mace, and I'll be your host for this podcast. Over the years, I've gathered hundreds of ghost encounter tales, but the vast majority of them are short and not very well suited for this format. So, for this episode, I'm forced to reach into the darkest part of my files, one of my own encounters. I've only shared this story with a few people. Not only does it push the boundaries of normal reality, but it's awkward for me on a couple of levels. Now that I'm a semi-mature adult, it's hard for me to relate to or even explain many of the things I did as a young man. I can no longer understand my own motivations for experimenting with the paranormal in the way that I did, except to say that I was curious. In 1980, I was in the Navy living in San Diego. I was fortunate enough to make the right connections and obtain permission to move off base. Most of my peers were stuck living in the barracks on the Naval Amphibious Base in Coronado. But I had managed to get my commanding officer and mastered arms to approve my request for per diem. As such, I was paid extra for housing and meals so that I could move off base. So, one of my co-workers and I found a small duplex in Imperial Beach, just a mile from the Mexican border. We paid our deposit and rent and moved in shortly thereafter. It was an older rental with two bedrooms and a bath and one of those wall-mounted heaters that taps at night when the heat's turned on. Its big advantage was that it was just 300 feet from the beach. My new roommate was assigned to a Navy patrol boat and was often away due to assignments. This left me alone most of the time. I didn't mind being alone, but... It did force me to find ways to occupy my time. Sometimes I would do the things that other 24-year-old Navy guys would do and hang out at the bar. and Other times I would stay home and read. Having always been interested in the paranormal, I began picking up books on various paranormal topics. At the time, I was extremely interested in books written by Carlos Castaneda. Since I was so close to the Mexican border, this somehow seemed an appropriate interest. In my travels, I also picked up some books on ghosts and witchcraft. One of the books I picked up was about casting spells. I'd never been interested in witchcraft before, but I thought this would be interesting reading and might expand my knowledge about the paranormal. I want to point out that I had no interest in becoming a witch and saw myself as someday becoming a parapsychologist. So knowledge was the main motivator in my future actions. While reading the book on spells, I came across a chapter that covered creating a safe location, protection against demons and negative spirits. I decided that I would follow the instructions and recite the spells. I figured if I was going to be reading these spells and incantations, it couldn't hurt to take out a little insurance, make a safe location to do it. I didn't really believe it would have any effect, but I wanted to see what was involved in making a protected place. Up to this point, I had never noticed anything unusual in the house. I followed the instructions, which included making symbols on my bedroom walls in the four directions, north, south, east, and west. After the symbols were in place, I read the incantation, which was said to create a barrier to protect one from demons. Feeling satisfied that I had done everything right, I moved on and continued reading my other books. It should be noted that This process was done in my room alone. The rest of the house was not included. 
As months passed, a few interesting things around the house started happening. I started noticing feeling creeped out and hearing small but noticeable knocking and scratching sounds on the walls at night. I wasn't as experienced as I am now and didn't assign any paranormal meaning to the sounds. Bad things started happening to us too. Our garage was broken into and stuff was stolen. My car was broken into and my CB was stolen. In those days, a lot of people had CB radios. One day when I was out of town, my roommate threw a small party. It was just basically him and some other Navy guys. At some point, a bunch of bikers from a local outlaw group crashed the party and a huge fight ensued. I returned to find the rental and some of my furniture busted up. The only place that escaped any damage was my bedroom. A few weeks later, my roommate moved out, and in order to save some money, I found a new roommate. My new roommate was an ex-Navy diver who had been assigned to the underwater demolition team. He was a great guy, a bit of an adventurer and a vagabond. He too was interested in the teachings of Don Juan by Mr. Castaneda. And we spent a lot of time exploring Mexico on our time off. We met a lot of really interesting people, and who knows, the way some of them seemed to us, they may have even been apprentices like Mr. Castaneda. I love dogs, and though the neighborhood seemed to be very safe, I decided I would get one to deter any more break-ins and thefts. I went to the local pound and adopted an adult German Shepherd. I named him Phantom. Phantom was a super dog who was very mellow and loved nothing more than to sit at the open front door and watch the world go by. He wasn't much of a watchdog. He even liked the mailman who would give him treats whenever Phantom was sitting in the doorway. I remember one Saturday afternoon I was home alone. I decided to lay down on the couch in the living room. I just started to doze off when I heard the loudest explosion I've ever heard in my life. It seemed to come from somewhere outside the house. It nearly threw me off the couch. The walls and windows shook. I looked over at Phantom and he was sitting in his usual spot and didn't seem to be concerned about anything. I walked outside and saw a few people walking down the street, but no one appeared excited or concerned. I myself was shaking and my heart was kind of pounding in my chest. I walked to my neighbor's unit and knocked on the door. I assumed that they had heard the blast and asked if they knew what the explosion was. They had no idea what I was talking about. In fact, I never could find anyone who had heard it. It definitely wasn't a dream, and it was as if the sky were going to come crashing down, but I was the only person who experienced it. I later would discover that these kinds of events were not uncommon during some paranormal experiences. In accordance with plans made a year earlier, I married my then girlfriend and she moved into the affordable Imperial Beach rental. Unfortunately, my roommate had to go, leaving the spare room open for any guests we might have. As my new bride and I returned from our honeymoon, we opened the front door and we were horrified by what we saw. The carpet seemed alive as millions of fleas jumped and hopped from the pile as it, as if celebrating our return. There were so many that the entire carpet looked as if it were moving. 
We bug bombed the house and had to on a regular basis from that point on. It was odd since previously I would only seen a few fleas here and there. As time went on, the house began feeling a bit more uncomfortable, especially when I was alone. Phantom didn't like sleeping in the living room or do whatever he could to sneak up on the couch or often into my bedroom at night. One night around 2 a.m., he woke me up. Phantom was uncharacteristically pushing on me with his nose to get my attention. I sat up and I started to chastise him for waking me up when all of a sudden his body went stiff. He was like one of those taxidermy animals, stiff to the touch. Then he fell to the floor and seemed to be in distress, breathing. I was in full panic mode, yelling for my wife to look up a 24-hour vet in the phone book. A few minutes later, Phantom snapped out of it and then walked back out to the living room where he got back on his bed. He had never really done anything like that before or after, and it really shook me. As time went on, I continued to read books on the paranormal and even picked up a deck of tarot cards to further my research. I read and tinkered with everything, astrology, numerology, palm reading, and even study a little black magic. I didn't believe in any of it, but I started to develop a theory that the human mind might influence some of these events in ways we didn't yet understand. I didn't see any harm in doing any of the research I was doing, and I guess I wasn't real observant about some of the things that were going on around us at the time. Looking back, there were many strange things that would occur. People I didn't know would stop by the house to hang out or play chess, usually in the evenings after dark. They always dropped the name of somebody I knew, so I would let them in. Nothing bad ever happened, but many times I would only see these people once, maybe twice, and never see them again. It was a strange and sometimes strained friendliness that eventually I decided it just was too weird, so I decided not to continue the practice. I suppose it was just naivety and youth and never living on my own before, but I assume this was something that normal young people did if they had a place of their own. I wonder now what drew these people to me. I even wondered if some of these people were even people. Or maybe I was just had too much castaneda on the brain. The strangeness finally came to a head one evening. My wife and I had been watching TV. We got tired and decided to turn in for the night. We went into the bedroom and climbed into bed. I had been there for just a few minutes not even close to going to sleep. When I heard Phantom climb up on the couch, he wasn't allowed on the furniture, and I wasn't going to let him start getting away with it now. I quickly got out of bed and made my way quietly to the room and around the corner. It was only a few feet from the bedroom to where Phantom was lying. As I turned the corner, I saw his sneaky silhouette slink off the couch and go flat on the floor as if I wouldn't have noticed. I said something to him like, you know, stay off the furniture. And I turned to go back down the hall. The living room was dimly lit by the street lights shining through the front window, allowing me to barely see where I was going. cold chill ran through my body. As soon as I stepped through the threshold, a dark mass seemed to glide up from the floor, blocking my path to the bedroom. It continued to grow until it was much taller than I was, maybe seven foot tall. My impression was it looked like the Grim Reaper, and I could hear what sounded like a coarse, 
silky material rubbing against itself right in front of me, and the figure moved towards me. I could feel it as it moved within an inch of my face, cutting off sound and air. My heart was pounding, and I went from the feeling of secure comfort in, the, in my home to icy cold and terrified. Fear sucked the air right out of my lungs, and I fell backwards to keep from actually making contact with the thing. As I hit the ground, I could still feel the presence of them. Just kind of dissolved into the darkness. Even though I couldn't see it, I still felt that it was still there somehow. I was still afraid, and I scrambled my way to the bedroom. My wife was sound asleep and completely unaware of the encounter. As I got back into bed, I considered waking her to tell her what had happened, but I decided I didn't know what had happened, so I waited. Then I realized my dog was still out in the living room, possibly with that thing. The room was pitch black, and despite the fact I was worried about my dog, I wasn't about to risk running into that black shadow to check on him, so I just laid there and listened. After about 20 minutes, I heard Phantom make his way back up to the couch. I decided he could stay there for the night. I did eventually share my experience with my wife. She didn't understand it, but didn't criticize me and accepted me at my word. Frankly, I wasn't sure about what I had experienced myself. I had never experienced anything like that before, so I had no point of reference for this event. I never encountered the being again, but in the dark, I always had the sense that it was there. I always made a beeline through the hallway from that day on, either trying to leave a light on, and turning it off just before I made the corner, or run as fast as I could through the dark. I also stopped reading my paranormal books, at least while we lived there. In hindsight, I can see where placing signs on my wall and performing a magical ceremony may have created a barrier around my room. Perhaps the thing was attempting to block me from the safe area. Maybe the spell attracted things from a world I didn't know about. Maybe it was like putting up one of those bug zappers where your intent is to kill bugs that come into your patio, but in reality the beautiful purple light draws the bugs from a mile away that wouldn't normally even make their way to your yard. I also wondered if all these strange and needy people, outlaw bikers and weird occurrences were also drawn to the house by some dark force. After my discharge from the Navy, my wife and I, along with Phantom, moved back to our hometown and never experienced anything like we did in Imperial Beach. While I have encountered ghosts and other paranormal events during my research over the years, I have not experienced anything that scared me like the shadow mass in my hallway. I always try to apply some scientific cause for everything, especially anything I've experienced in the paranormal world. I always surmise that maybe, just maybe, the odd structure that was across the street from our home might have influenced my experience in some way. There was this huge military antenna, almost looked like a large circular fence, it was known as the elephant cage. It was less than 500 feet from my front door. The Navy radio receiving facility was reportedly used to assist Navy submarines navigate around the world. Who knows, maybe the strong radio waves affected my brain in some way, or maybe it created some kind of portal to the other side. Maybe there is no other side, and maybe it didn't have anything to do with my experience at the house. I'll probably never know for sure. One thing I do know is once we left the house, life became somewhat normal. I wonder if the occupants that lived there after me ever had any issues. 
I wonder if they ever met the huge shadowy thing in the hallway in the dark. I hope not, for their sake. I hope you enjoyed this true ghost story. While I can't provide as much documentation as I have on previous tales, I can say I know this one to be absolutely true. But even though I experienced it myself, I have no explanation as to what caused it. Was it just my overactive imagination, or was it just the result of being bombarded with an overly strong radio signal capable of reaching submarines below the water? Maybe it was something truly paranormal. Your guess is as good as mine. I hope you'll check back and listen to all my true ghost stories. When you do return, I'll be waiting here, outside the veil. <laughs>